Hello, I'm Joe Muscolino, and I'm going to be showing you contract, relax, stretching, and I'll be using the right lateral flexor functional group of muscles of our client's head and neck as the target musculature for contract, relax, stretching. First, uh, a point on names. Contract, relax, stretching is often known by its acronym CR stretching. It's also known as proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching, PNF stretching, and it's also known as post-isometric relaxation stretching, PIR stretching. The way we do this technique is we begin by first seeing how much stretch our client has of her right lateral flexor muscles, the target muscles. Therefore, we bring her into left lateral flexion as far as she can go with passive range of motion. This is the starting point for CR stretching. I'm going to place the heel of my hand here on the side of her head. It's very important that I don't come down too inferiorly, both because I don't want to press on her ear or temporal mandibular joint, and also because that would be a tremendous torque in my wrist. So if I go as high up on the head as I can, still having a bit of grab here with the palm of my hand, the thenar and hypothenar eminences, then I'll be in a good position there. Because we're going to be pressing our client into left lateral flexion, I need to make sure that her trunk and right shoulder girdle doesn't lift up, which would make us lose the stretch in the neck, so I'll need to stabilize there. We have a few choices on stabilizing. I like to stabilize using my right hand on her right shoulder girdle, the top, the superior surface, and my left hand on the right side of her head, and I like to place my elbows as close inside my core, inside my ASISs, anterior, superior, iliac spines, as possible. If the therapist has a lot of soft tissue in front, either large breasts or large abdomen, you sometimes cannot get all the way in, but the closer in to the center of the core you get, the better you can use your core for biomechanics, for body mechanics here. So I like to do it this way. Some people like to do the stretch here. I think this looks very fancy, but body mechanics wise really isn't very good because it means we're using pec muscles as our force drivers instead of core. Another way to stabilize here is to plant the elbow. I probably have to lean down a bit here, but that can be okay. Another way is to use the soft part of my forearm at a diagonal across her shoulder girdle here. And then one other way is to place my hand here and kind of lean in this way. This looks horrible body mechanics wise, and I normally never recommend that the elbows go out that way, but it works quite well for this particular stretching routine. So to return to the way I would normally do it, we'll start with her squared on the table. Okay, so we bring her into left lateral flexion as far as she can go passively. Place my treatment hand, my stretching hand, my stabilization hand elbows into the core. Take a breath in for me. And as you breathe it out, I want you to press against my hand here gently, trying to slide your right ear towards your right shoulder girdle. Keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. Three, two, one. Relax. Finish breathing out. I'll stretch you a bit more. Take another breath in and press against my hand the same way again. That's it, press, keep pressing. You can even press a little harder this time. Keep pressing, four, three, two, one. Relax, I'll stretch you even farther into left lateral flexion. Take another breath in, press against me again, perhaps even a bit harder this time. Go ahead, press, 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 three, two, one. Relax, finish breathing out. I'll stretch you even a bit more and take another breath in and press against me again, building up slowly. Press as hard as you comfortably can. Don't hurt yourself, but as hard as you comfortably can. Three, two, one, relax. And I'm just now going to stretch you even more. There we go. At the end of the stretch, it's very important you relax. I'm going to bring you back. Don't help. There we go. Relax there. Okay. The stated mechanism for CR stretching is usually said to be the Golgi tendon organ 
proprioceptive neurologic reflex. The GTO reflex works that if you ask the client to contract the target musculature, in this case the right lateral flexor, she's trying to right lateral flex, go ahead, then that will cause a reflex inhibition of these muscles by the GTO reflex, the Golgi tendon organ reflex, relax, and that inhibition will cause it to relax and when she then finishes contracting and is relaxed, we can stretch her even farther than we would have otherwise been able to. Okay, I'll bring you back here again. One more note on CR stretching. With CR stretching, very often the client doesn't press the way you want or they don't move the way you want them to. If we're trying to isolate this to right lateral flexors, it's important that her nose stays pointed straight up to the ceiling. If she were to introduce some rotation, the nose would go off a different direction. If you ask the client to press, and press against me, but kind of rotate too. If you see the nose going off, relax now, just stop and just go to the person and say, I want you to try and press this way. Can you do that? Show me. Oh, we got a little rotation again there. So go ahead, show me. Just sliding your head. Perfect. Good. And you're going to press right against me there. Perfect. Relax. So sometimes a little bit of client education beforehand helps you so you don't have to stop in the middle of the protocol and instruct them and restart again. I'm Joe Musclino, and this is CR stretching of the right lateral flexor muscles of the neck. Hello, I'm Joe Musclino, and I would just like to add something. I've shown you in three different video clips, CR, contract, relax, stretching for the neck, AC, agonist contract, stretching for the neck, and joint mobilization for the neck. And I'd like to add something about precautions, contraindications. If a client has any type of what's called a space-occupying condition, space-occupying lesion, such as a large bone spur from osteoarthritis, degenerative joint disease, or a pathologic disc, a bulging or herniated disc, it is contraindicated to bring the client into lateral flexion to that side. So if she had some type of an unhealthy disc or bone spur on the right side that might be occupying space and compressing on a spinal nerve as it comes out through the intervertebral foramen there, I would not want to close down that side and bring her into lateral flexion to that side. Okay, it's important to be aware of that. One more thing. Joint mobilization really is a specific form of stretching, but before you choose to add this into your clinical practice, make sure that you're in compliance with the, regula with the regulations in your state or province or region, because joint mobilization is not legally allowed within the scope of practice for massage therapy in every part of the United States. So double check on that. Thank you, Joe Musclino. My pleasure sharing these tips with you.